Elon Musk has big plans for his aerospace company SpaceX. Beaming broadband down to Earth from a fleet of thousands of satellites is just a stepping stone in the company's mission, which ultimately hopes to colonize Mars. If you're picturing a far off science fiction future, think again. Musk intends to send the first settlers over to the red planet well within our lifetimes, and possibly even within this decade. At the Axel Springer Award Ceremony last year in Berlin, when asked when humans will be able to travel to Mars, the SpaceX founder said, I'd say six years from now, highly confident. If we get lucky, maybe four years. To this end, the multi-billionaire has been testing a pioneering vessel, simply named Starship. The craft is set to be the world's most powerful launch vehicle and is being developed at a super fast speed with 13 prototypes and 8 launches completed so far to varying degrees of success. The most recent of these was on March 30th, 2021 where SpaceX launched its fourth high altitude flight test of Starship from its Texas base. The purpose of these tests are to gain a greater understanding of how to build a transport ship that's fully reusable in order to carry the crew and cargo necessary for the 140 million mile interplanetary voyage to Mars. There's still a long way to go given that the Starship keeps exploding. Three prototypes have exploded so far during testing, namely the SN8, SN9 and SN10 versions, but don't worry, it's all part of the SpaceX testing philosophy of test, fly, fail, fix, repeat. Unlike most rockets, which are primarily built using carbon fiber, Starship is made from stainless steel, giving it that iconic shiny look. There are a few reasons for this, the first and arguably most important being cost. With wastage being taken into account, carbon fiber can cost up to $200 per kilogram compared to just $3 for the same amount of stainless steel. Up to one third of carbon fiber needs to be scrapped after the polymer is cut to the rocket's exact specifications, so it's far less cost effective for a project of this magnitude. The second reason is that stainless steel has a much higher melting point at 815 degrees Celsius compared to carbon fiber's 149 degrees, which is pretty important when dealing with rocket fuel. Musk has been investigating different types of stainless steel to use in Starship's construction. The current metal being used is known as 301 stainless steel and has a history of use in spacecraft design, but Musk reckons Starship will start using a different type very soon, stating in a tweet last year, we should be able to do better in the 2020s than they did in like, the 50s you know. A top candidate is 301L due to its toughness at cryogenic temperatures. So what can we expect to find inside the 164 foot stainless steel Starship? In current models, the nose cone at the top of the craft has been left empty, save for a few key pieces of tech that we'll talk about later. But SpaceX plans to turn this space into a functional cargo bay and crew quarters for around 100 passengers to make the trip to Mars. Each cabin will be big enough for two to three people, though there's always potential to transport more passengers in exchange for a little bit of comfort. You could conceivably have five or six people per cabin if you really wanted to crowd people in, Musk has stated. Common areas, storage space, and a shelter from potential encounters with dangerous solar storms could also be housed in the nose cone. Official renderings and unofficial concept videos give us an idea of what these spaces might look like. A large viewing gallery at the top of the cone would give passengers the perfect spot to gaze out over the cosmos or catch a violin concert in zero G, according to an artist's rendering on the SpaceX website. Others speculate that the area could include recreational spaces like a gym, though it's clear that one of SpaceX's top priorities is keeping weight to a minimum, so we have our doubts about the number of treadmills and chest press machines that'll be on board. Reusability is key to Starship's design, meaning, despite current issues, it has been able to land safely. SpaceX has already had some success with its familiar two-stage rocket Falcon 9, which is the world's first orbital-class reusable rocket. Unlike Falcon 9, however, Starship is much larger at 120 meters tall and 9 meters in diameter, meaning the same vertical landing technique just isn't feasible. Instead, the way Starship handles re-entry and landing is by extending flaps on the side of its hull to create drag and slow the descent using Earth's atmosphere. To make this work, SpaceX has installed Tesla battery packs attached to adapted car engines from the Model 3 supercar. Inside the nose cone, these operate the actuators that extend the flaps. Below the nose cone, the lower two parts of the rocket house the all-important fuel tanks. These are separated into liquid methane and liquid oxygen, 
which is an unorthodox combination for rocket fuel. SpaceX chose these cryogenic liquids because they are less dense than hydrogen, which in turn makes the whole spacecraft lighter. Another reason for the oxygen slash methane mix is that it burns clean, which is crucial to the aerospace company's mission to man return flights. The tanks actually take up the most space on the rocket, as together they need to hold a huge amount of fuel, 1,200 tons of it to be precise. They are separated by a single bulkhead called the common dome, which takes up half the space that the conventional two bulkheads would. There's one part of the nose cone we haven't mentioned yet, and that's the header tank. There are two of these on board the Starship, with the other located in the common dome bulkhead. They're each filled with separate reserves of oxygen and methane to be brought online during the final stages of landing. These play an important role, as after the six month long interplanetary journey is complete, the main fuel tanks will have been mostly exhausted. These reserves are crucial, and if the fuel inside them is inadequately pressurized, the vessel could very well crash and burn during landing, as we saw at the launch test in December. Let's hope Elon and the SpaceX team fix that particular quirk before sending the first crew to Mars. The final part of Starship's design is the engines. There are three of SpaceX's Raptor engines in the ship's current iteration, which are optimized for operation at sea level. The company plans to outfit future versions of Starship with a total of six engines, three of which will be optimized for vacuum conditions in space. These will have a larger nozzle diameter of 2.8 meters compared to the current Raptor's 1.3 meter nozzle. Starship isn't just about going to Mars. SpaceX envisions a number of other possible uses for the shuttle, including delivering satellites further and at a lower cost per launch than its current range of Falcon rockets. The scale of Starship means that large payloads are more than possible, and telescopes bigger than James Webb, that's a successor to the Hubble, could be sent into orbit. Before conducting missions to Mars, SpaceX has its eyes on a more achievable goal. In 2023, Starship will conduct the first ever civilian flight to the Moon. The project, named Dear Moon, is being financed by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Mozawa, and passengers will include Mozawa himself, along with eight civilians and one or two crew members. The week-long journey will be an important step forward for space tourism and the possibilities of the Mars mission. Are you excited about the prospect of humanity colonizing Mars in the near future? And if offered the chance, would you sign up to be a part of SpaceX's major voyage to the Red Planet? Let us know your thoughts on Elon Musk's ambitious Starship project down in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more insights into the latest news in technology and business.